Hey guys, thanks for checking out Mavericks Arcade. My name is Chuck, and today we're going to be talking about something not arcade related, but still gaming. And that is the Quest 2 and the Air Link feature and the best way to connect it. Now, those who are not that familiar with the Quest line or Oculus line, the products, uh, first we had the Rift, uh, which I think they call CV1 now, and that required the remote sensors. And the downside to that is you had to constantly have good line of sight for all of your sensors, or the tracking would get a little muddy. Uh, made it a little more difficult for um, some of the streaming because, you know, you'd have to have your green screens, but then also had to have to have the sensors in the right place to make sure that everything got tracked correctly. Uh, they then had the Rip, uh, Quest come out, which was the first to introduce inside-out tracking, which means you didn't need the little sensors, you just had little cameras on the device that would track the outside environment to figure out your relative position. And the Quest 1 was one of the first um, portable VR systems that didn't require a computer. Now, we could talk about the Oculus Go, but that thing was kind of crap and only really good for watching more adult content or movie things. So then the Rift S came out, which was the wired PC system, which I did have, um, that allowed you to use your PC for all the graphics and get full quality VR, but it was inside out tracking. So you again, didn't have to worry about setting up all the sensors. Now they came out with the Quest 2 and the Quest 2 has better resolution and better functionality than the Rift S did. The only downside was they did not they do not plan on making any more Rift products for the PC. But just like the Quest, the Rift, or the Quest 2 allows you to hook a USB-C cable. They do have, you can use multiple versions, but uh, Oculus does release one, which I have, that gives you the full quality experience better than the Rift S with the portable product. Now the benefit uh, to this is you can either play tethered to your PC for full quality graphics and full VR games, or you can disconnect and play VR on the go. And this is a great option because then I can, you know, before bed, if I want to play a couple games of poker, then go ahead and do that no problem wirelessly without even using my PC. This is also a great option for people that don't have enough money or the budget to build themselves a real good gaming PC to power the graphics at full quality on one of these. Now, again, like I said, you would, to get full quality, the best option would be to get that Oculus uh, ReadyLink cable, which would make this act like a Rift device. But just recently in their beta, um, and it's now available to everyone in beta, and there's plenty of videos right now on YouTube showing how to uh, tweak those settings to get the optimal settings for bandwidth and things like that. But the one thing that nobody seems to be addressing is the best way to get this device connected to your PC wireless. So what the current instructions say is that everybody should be close to their Wi-Fi router, and then they provide the steps on how to, you know, connect your device to your PC. But we're gonna describe real quick what the problem with that approach is, and what my approach is for the best way to connect your AirLink to your desktop. All right, please excuse the cheesy drawing. Um, but again, I'm just trying to make a quick video here. So here we have our internet router right here in the middle with the R, and then we have our internet connection with the I. This could be Fios, Comcast, whatever you have. Um, so then we have uh, just a quick sampling of various devices you may have connected to your network. You know, you've got your kid's PC up here. You got another PC over here, multiple TVs, an Xbox, a PS5, which, God, I wish I could get. It's so difficult. Um, I'm still promising my son from Christmas that he could get one, so we'll see when that happens. And then, of course, Alexa and various other devices you may have in your house that are home automation. We have a bunch here. Um, so all of those things are using your internet connection and communicating over your routers. So then you have your little... Oculus device over here. So we're just going to put a little O there. And right now they're saying to connect your normal Wi-Fi and compete with all this other traffic that's existing out there. So your experience may vary based on how many kids are streaming stuff uh, 
doing schoolwork, whatever the issue may be, you're fighting for network traffic with all the other devices in your house. And if you're like many households where the router may be more centralized, but the computer that you're playing at is far from the router and you have a hardwired connection because you're a gamer and playing games over Wi-Fi is just kind of goofy, then being close to your router is kind of more of a pain. So what I'm suggesting we do is instead of doing a connection here, we connect directly into the VR capable PC over wireless. And why I'm suggesting to do that is because if we have the ability to connect the Wi-Fi directly to the PC, then this internet connection is only being used for normal game things. Like if you're playing um, a game with voice, um, that voice communication isn't fighting with your Oculus for that bandwidth on your Wi-Fi connection or on your LAN connection to the Wi-Fi. You're not creating a loop from here to the router back to your PC to fight amongst all the other devices. Now, the reason why I'm able to do this so easily on my system is because my motherboard has Wi-Fi built in, but because I game and I stream and all this other stuff, I've never used the Wi-Fi on my PC. I have always just disabled the Wi-Fi adapter and used the gigabit LAN adapter built into my motherboard. So finally, I have a use for that extra Wi-Fi adapter. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your Wi-Fi does not have um, any profiles configured for it because we don't want this Wi-Fi adapter connecting to anything. Um, other... Actually, we don't want it connecting to anything. We want our Oculus to connect to it. So we go into the properties of our network and we go to change adapter options. Now, like I said, when I'm not using it, I disable my adapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and enable that adapter. And now that it's enabled, I can go over to uh, mobile hotspot and I'm gonna turn that on and I'm gonna, you can see here I created a weird password. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to change that after this broadcast. But what you'll do is you'll put that setting into your Oculus so that your Oculus then connects directly to your PC. Then in the Oculus software, you'll go into settings, beta, and you'll turn on the air link. And then in your headset, You will go ahead and connect. Let's make sure we're connected to the right Wi-Fi. So you can see right now, it's trying to connect me to my home network. And instead, we're gonna to connect to my gaming PC directly. Now that we're on my PC directly, we're gonna turn on that AirLink feature. And now what you'll see is this is an option, Oculus AirLink. We'll click on that. We will click that and pair it. Now that it's connected, we will go ahead and hit launch. And here, it's just like it's a tethered connection. But then we will click on this Oculus Air Link, and we're going to put that bandwidth all the way up to 200. And that's going to make sure that we get the full quality bursting out of here. Now, why my home is empty, I do not know. It's very sad. I think I got evicted. This isn't good. They took all my stuff. In any case, we'll figure out where the movers took all my stuff. But again, this will allow you to... Get the full quality, not fight with network resources and within your own home and allow you, even if you're far from your router where your machine is, if you have an adapter built into your machine that you just never use, use that adapter, get directly connected and get a better state, more stable connection. Again, uh, we normally do arcade video related things. I just wanted to get this information out there and, uh, if you're into retro arcade games or full arcade machines, everything like that, make sure to subscribe and like this video and share the hell out of it, please. So till next time, we'll see you soon.